In many diffusion problems, we're given a concentration at the surface which is larger than the bulk, and that diffusing species goes into the host material. For this question, it's a little bit different. We're told that the alloy initially has a concentration of 0.35 weight percent carbon in this iron carbon alloy. We're then told that it's placed in an oxygen-rich, carbon-free atmosphere at a high temperature. So what will happen is that the carbon at the surface of this alloy will actually be consumed by reacting with the atmosphere. And therefore, we're told that the carbon concentration at the surface is maintained at zero weight percent carbon. So we're removing carbon from the alloy. This is called decarburization. The question wants to know the following. At what position, meaning distance from the surface, will the carbon concentration be 0 0.15, which is a reduced value from its initial value, after a 10-hour treatment? So as soon as it says 10-hour treatment, we know that we're talking about non-steady state diffusion. So we're going to have to use fixed second law given by this partial differential equation. Fortunately, in the book, we're given the solution to the semi-infinite solid for this equation, which is given as such. So we, let's take account of what variables we have been given. We know the initial concentration, 0.35 weight percent carbon. We know the temperature. We know what the surface composition is going to be, the concentration of the diffusing species at the surface is maintained at zero weight percent. Furthermore, we know what we're asked to solve for at a position, so Cx is going to be 0 0.15 weight percent carbon. We know the temperature, we know the time, and we're given the diffusion coefficient at that temperature. So we have everything to solve for x in this expression. Let's go ahead and plug in the values. Once the values are plugged in, we see that the only thing we don't know is x. So let's start simplifying. The left-hand side of our equation and what's inside of our error function can be reduced to single values. We have 0 0.571 equals 1 minus the error function of x, which we're going to solve for, over a distance, 3.152 times 10 to the negative third meters. For just a moment, let's call everything inside of this error function z, which allows us to write 0 0.571 equals 1 minus the error function of z. Therefore, the error function of z equals 0 0.429. Therefore, now that we know what the error function of z is, we can look up using an error function table what the value of z is. Turning to our table, we see the following. Here's our error function of z value we just solved for. Unfortunately, it doesn't match either the error function z's that are closest to it in the table. Therefore, we're going to have to do a linear interpolation, the equation for which is written as follows. z minus the value above, 0.4, or the quantity of the value below, 0.45, minus the value above, 0.4. This will be equal to our error function of z value, 0.429, minus the value above, 0.4284 over the value below 0 0.4755 minus 0 0.4284. This allows us to solve for z. We find that z is equal to 0 0.4006. Now that we know z, we can recognize that z was just substituted for what was inside of the error function, which is x over 3.152 times 10 to the negative third meters. Therefore, x, the distance that we're asked to solve for, is simply going to be 0 0.4006 times 3.152 times 10 to the negative third meters, which equals 0 0.00126 meters, or 1.26 millimeters.